Yo. Yo, we see, I mean like, what I wanna ask you is, even if you have signed a contract, you're gonna break that contract, break the lease or whatnot, you're facing penalties for that, I want you to ask yourself, which is best? Which is the less of two evils, lesser of two evils? Facing handling the penalties for breaking this contract or staying? Hey there, Aquarius. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. Welcome to March and welcome to the channel. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very, very nice to meet you. And if you are returning, what is up, guys? So monthly readings, general monthly reading for March of 2021. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please keep in mind, Aquarius, that this is a general reading. Yes, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, um, we could be talking to a cross watcher here. The roles can be reversed. So just because I'm narrating it one way does not mean it absolutely has to resonate for you in that way. Just place it in your life as it resonates and then leave the rest that does not. Yes? So for this month, we do have St. Patrick's Day this month. And so because of that, I was inspired and guided to use the Fairy Forest Oracle deck to get us some overall, uh, to get a closing um, Oracle message for the reading. And then we're using the Mystical Manga Tarot this month. Yeah. Um, I am available for private readings. If you guys would like to get one from me, all you got to do is check out the description box below. You will find a list of some of the readings that I offer and my email address divineconversations2711 at gmail.com. Read through that. Go ahead and shoot me an email and I'll get you all booked and set up. Yes. Also, um, if you are vibing with me as a reader and you would like some more content, I highly recommend that you check me out over on Patreon, patreon.com slash divineconversations. That link can be found in the description box as well. We do daily readings there. We also do um, bi-weekly bi twin flame readings and bi-weekly inner masculine, inner feminine readings. In those readings, the inner masculine and feminine readings, we go through, we talk about what could be going on within in terms of your inner masculine and inner feminine energies to get you some more clarity so that if you would like to work on balancing and harmonizing and integrating those energies, then we give you a way of doing that. Yes? <clears throat> okay, Aquarius, let's get into your reading here. So I have your pre-shuffle and one card came out. It was the Ten of Pentacles, okay? And I definitely feel like, Aquarius, we're talking about a family situation here. This feels very much like a home. I mean, I, 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 the Ten of Pentacles typically does represent that um, long-lasting relationships, being in long something, some, being in something for the long haul, even if it's not a romantic relationship. Um, and it can also re represent, you know, business and career and finances. Um, but it also, as a 10, it can represent a completion. And for me, the 10 of Pentacles as a reader has really been um, symbolizing the completion of a lesson, the completion of a life cycle. Like when you finish up a life lesson, um, it often it represents itself as the Ten of Pentacles and then you go on to the next cycle or you graduate to the next level or the next grade, we could say, right? But then they have, the Ten of Pentacles can also represent that ultimate family life, you know, that ultimate material family, the, the really nice house and the, the nice car or the white picket, whatever. Whatever that ideal materialistic aspect of a family life could be, that can, uh, for you, that's what it can represent. And the Ten of Pentacles here in this situation, Aquarius, absolutely felt like a family situation, a home, a family life, or something like that. And then I saw what was at the bottom of the deck. It's the Queen of Swords. So I feel like somebody here is facing, potentially facing a harsh, harsh reality within your fam within their family situation just so you know it's super windy today so that's probably what you're probably hearing all of that happening right now but anyway somebody is facing a pretty harsh situation within a family this queen of swords can represent an individual that's just being overly i i just heard overly suspicious okay that's entirely possible um but ultimately this also could be an individual that's working on gaining gaining some sort of clarity um, and making a hard or tough decision or a harsh decision because of it. The Queen of Swords can 
potentially represent divorce because the Queen of Swords can represent the divorcee or just somebody that has been really hurt, really damaged in the past in terms of relationships and is not trying to have that any longer. This could be someone that's reached their wit's end in terms of a relationship. This doesn't have to be a marriage. This Ten of Pentacles can also represent the fact that this has just been a long-standing situation. I definitely feel an energy of somebody having been in this situation, quite frankly, for the long haul, only to come to a plateau or to come to a realization that this is just not working out or it's not going to work out and there's a good amount of anger involved because I feel like somebody had really been trying really had been trusting the process and now they're being faced with the harsh reality of wow maybe this maybe I've been putting so much time and energy and effort into this situation yeah somebody was really working for this eight of pentacles and I feel like at this point you or they may be in the Queen of Swords energy because they're just so pissed off and fed up with the fact that I put so much time and effort in into this situation and I have nothing to show for it, basically. Which is not true because ultimately you do have something to show for it. It's just not what you wanted, not what you were working towards, okay? So ultimately this, salud! Ultimately this could be a lesson in in life, um, this is a def especially if this is about relationships, interpersonal relationships or romantic relationships, this is definitely a lesson that somebody needed to learn. Maybe in terms of overgiving, I did just hear that. Um, but I mean, oh. Okay, we have the Seven of Swords to the Eight of Wands that's come out here. So it does feel like somebody has gained some sort of clarity in terms of deception. Okay, and that could also be why somebody is in the Queen of Swords energy because they figured it out, they found out. But now that they've found out about some sort of deception, lies, cheating, backstabbing, whatnot, whatever, now that you're aware of it, the space, the, the air is clear, you can move on. I also kind of feel like though, somebody is kind of stewing in this Queen of Swords energy instead of just moving, cutting and moving forward. I feel like someone might be staying around and and, and I don't know why. I don't know why someone would want to stay around now, especially if they're aware of some sort of deception. But if they are staying around, or if you are staying around right now, it's only generating more resentment. I feel like there's a difficulty here that someone is having in letting go of the situation. Which is interesting, because the Queen of Swords is not really an, an energy to hold on to something. But I feel like somebody is holding on right now. Maybe you feel like you can't let go. Because Ten of Pentacles, I don't know, you've signed a contract, or you're married, or you're in this just long-standing situation that you don't want to just give up on now. But if you're staying in a situation that's not making you happy, and you're aware of some sort of deception or whatnot, whatever, you staying in the situation is only going to make you angrier is only going to make the situation worse. I can't help but feel like somebody really is clinging to this. I guess maybe you're feeling like hopefully it'll get better, but at this point, the hanged man just came out. And I, and it's funny because I thought maybe that would be the seven of pentacles because I was going to say at this point, I mean, you should know by now, but that hanged man definitely just confirmed that. The wheel of fortune to the seven of swords. Somebody is holding on to the situation instead of doing what is right for them and what's best for them to and, and cutting out and getting off of this karmic hamster wheel, someone is just staying. You should know by now, honestly. If somebody is staying in a situation that they know is deceptive, they should know by now. And you're only making the situation worse for yourself and potentially the other people that are involved by staying in this because it's only generating more resentment and creating more of a negative Queen of Swords type of situation, okay? Oof. All right, let's give this one more clearing shuffle. And then we'll get into the rest of your reading here, Aquarius. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Aquarians at this time. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages in, to, to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representations of the general energies for Aquarius for the month of March of 2021. Thank you so much. 
so very much, Spirit. All right, Aquarius, let's give this five shuffles and then we'll see what we've got for you, yeah? One. For my Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of March of 2021. This is two. This is three. For Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, this is four. And this is five. All right, Aquarius, let's cut the deck here. Boop. All right, overall energy, Aquarius, we have the Hierophant. Yeah, we could be talking about a marriage here, but it doesn't have to be that. What I'm hearing is a long-standing commitment. That doesn't have to be marriage. It could be a, a, a relationship that you've been committed in well, let me not do that because at first you you were committed in the beginning, but now things have changed, and now it's it's it, it seems like it's become more of um, obligation than anything else, which could be creating even more resentment here, especially if there's some sort of deception that someone has become aware of. This could be a job, you guys. This could definitely be a job. You could be in a, a business or a work situation in which you've been working, working diligently, working hard, and then like you get slighted somehow. Like somebody gets an account that you've been working towards that you maybe did all the work for, and now all of a sudden homeboy over here that like sat around and twiddled his thumbs has, is like the leader of the, or has, like, has secured the account or some shit. It's something like that. I, but there's a feeling of not being able to let go of this for for some reason whether it is because you've been in this for so long and you just you can't give up now or you've made some sort of commitment like you signed a contract but i was saying with that ten of pentacles there's some sort of contractual agreement here whether it's business or romance okay and it's and it's it's become an obligation it's not a choice of free will any longer at least I mean, you still have free will, don't get me wrong, but like someone feels like they can't use that free will, which may also be creating more and more resentment. So you may not be able to get out of it that easily. You might be stuck here in some way. You're not, you're not, ultimately you're not always stuck forever, okay? You still have free will, but it feels like somebody might feel like they don't, like they don't have a choice with this Hierophant energy. Underneath the Hierophant is the Queen of Cups, and then the Seven of Swords, oh shit, to the Three of Cups, yo. Whoa, okay, so this took a turn. Um, yeah, this could be a marriage in which somebody was cheating. Three of Cups, Seven of Swords, the Hierophant. The Hierophant represents that, that um, dedication, that commitment, that some sort of institution. And someone started here as the Queen of Cups, okay? But ultimately, what I feel like here, if this is a romantic situation, or even if it's a business situation, it still could apply. But it feels like somebody here started as the Queen of Cups. Very open, very loving, very nurturing, unconditionally loving, probably lacking in boundaries. And then time went on, and someone basically figured out or was given the opportunity to start cutting up to start slipping up to be deceptive and this queen of cups was always like oh it's okay i'll give you the benefit of the doubt at this that and the third i'll just be continual i'll continue to be loving and and compassionate and i'll be there for you this that and the third only for this person to be sneaking around on them in the back but that's because they could because of whatever this institution is the hierophant they were given the opportunity to do so plus somebody's compassionate, unconditionally loving nature. Which then ultimately turned that Queen of Swords, I'm sorry, Queen of Cups into the Queen of Swords. Which makes perfect sense. Because if once the Queen of Cups switches into that Queen of Swords energy, she can be real vindictive, real spiteful, real resentful. But that's coming from a lack of boundaries. So I think... 
you're not mad at the other person or the situation. You're mad at yourself for allowing this to happen. And I get it. Okay. I totally get it. But ultimately, you've got to do... The, like, See, that's the thing. I feel like this Queen of Cups also is kind of feeling like, well, somebody... And this might actually be why there's more and more resentment just building on top. Well, somebody will save me or somebody will help me or somebody will come to my rescue or this person will change or this, that, and the third. Nope. That right there is also a lack of boundaries. It is not somebody else's responsibility to save you. You've got to save yourself. So while you may feel like you are obligated, you can't, you're obligated to stay here and you this, that, and the third, that is a bold-faced lie. That is exactly what this institutionalized energy wants you to think. I mean, I understand if you signed a contract, you've signed a contract, and you've either got to pay the penalties for getting out of that contract or you've got to fulfill it. I get it. But if that's not the case, you're just living, and you think that you're stuck here. You're living under the illusion of the hierophant. You're living under the, the illusion of the institution, period. First set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius, in the first half of your, do you, do you like, do you like my, like, one little ringlet that's, like, longer than everything else? I should probably get my hair trimmed. Anyway, first set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius, in the first half of your reading is the Two of Wands. I don't, uh, honestly, Aquarius, I don't care what this, these people or this person are trying to tell you or what this situation has been saying to you, but you absolutely do have a choice, okay? Two of Wands is coupled with the Four of Wands. This could be a family, a home life. We absolutely could be talking about somebody facing the prospect of divorce. And if it's not an actual marriage, then this just feels like it, I mean, it could, when you think about it, in theory, it could be a divorce because I just feel like there's something that has been long standing here, something that has been able to really get serious roots, serious foundation. You have a choice to make, okay? Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius. We have justice, yo, yo, we see, I mean like, Every step of the way, we're just getting cards that can represent divorce. I'm not making this up, Aquarius. Y'all watch me shuffle, okay? And honestly, what I want to ask you is, even if you are, even if you have signed a contract, and now if you're gonna, if you're gonna break that contract, break the lease or whatnot, you're facing penalties for that, I want you to ask you, ask yourself, which is best? Which is the less of two evils, lesser of two evils? Facing handling the penalties for breaking this contract or staying? Justice is coupled with the nine of wands. And this is asking you to persevere, to not give up, to not just like, to not crumble, to not collapse under the weight of this now. And I really feel like this Nine of Wands energy is really, in, in, a, in, in, in many ways, is asking you, is, or is requiring you to really step up and stand up and be honest with yourself. Like, don't crumble now. Don't falter now. Don't collapse now. Okay. I just heard you can get through this. Your challenge here, Aquarius, in the first half of your reading is the Seven of Cups. Yeah, there's a lot of options. And there may even be a good amount of like gaslighting or smoke and mirrors or whatnot. There's confusion here. But you're needing to see through the confusion. In terms of making this decision, in terms of this decision that you have to make, there could be a lot of different things that you need to handle or a lot of different things that you need to mentally sift through. Again, I feel like that justice with the nine of wands is asking you to really think about which are the lesser of two evils. Okay, and you, have, you may have a, a lot to weed through to understand that, but don't 
Don't collapse now. Don't crumble now. And, and, and don't allow yourself to continue sinking into resentment. Think about it. Handle it. And work towards justice. Okay? Seven of Cups is coupled with the Page of Cups. Uh, getting back to a sense of... Uh, it, it, uh, of Oh, well, I was just going to say getting back to a sense of innocence, but instead of saying innocence, I almost said ignorance. Uh, and this might be a level of emotional ignorance. I don't mean this in a, in a, in a um, offensive way, but part of what could be keeping you locked into this situation is the fact that maybe Aquarius, either you or somebody else needs to work on some emotional awareness. Maybe that's what this Queen of Cups represents here. There's a sense of naiveness here. And I feel like it's a sense of emotional naiveness that is allowing someone else to keep hold or keep control over this situation over you or the other person, which is then only helping to generate resentment. Mm. Okay, closing message or potential outcome for you, Aquarius, in the first half of your reading is the Page of Pentacles. So there you have it. There is that graduation from the 10. I definitely feel like somebody, this might be someone who's fairly new to dating, maybe, or love or relationships, or it's just maybe inexperienced in that. Um, and I feel like this is definitely a lesson in emotional boundaries and emotional awareness, even if it is just business, okay? But I feel like this page of pentacles for you, Aquarius, is a step in a new direction um, or a level up. And no, it's not an easy lesson. No, I get it. That first heartbreak tends to be the worst. Or at least it feels like it's the absolute worst. And then of course you grow up and you keep dating and you keep getting your heart broken and then eventually you just become numb to it, unfortunately. It doesn't have to be that way though. It doesn't have to be that way if you learn the lessons through each heartbreak and do better the next time. Page of Pentacles is coupled with the fool, there you go. This definitely feels like a, a, a hard life lesson that someone is learning when it comes to love. It doesn't have to be love, it could be anything, it could be business. But this does feel like a hard life lesson. One of like the first real tough ones that you get. So I might be talking to someone that's fairly young or at least fairly new to the game, okay? And actually, you don't have to be new to the game, but this could be, like, you could be a, a man or a woman of a certain age, and you could actually be married, but it just feels like there is a lack of experience here and, and, and naivety. Did I say, I don't know if I say that right. Na, na, naivete, 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 whatever. Naiveness, we'll go with that. That has led to this situation here, but ultimately you have the opportunity to grow from it and learn and do better next time. Okay, if you even want a next time, like, whoa, don't like, damn. <laughs> but like, I understand you're in, a, you're in a place of hurt, so okay, I get it. But like, don't shoot the messenger, please. <laughs> All right, Aquarius, let's get into the second half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies, you have the King of Cups. Emotional maturity. So this could be a really fast growth period for somebody, but you have the Queen and the King of Cups, okay? So what's going to lead to you getting to this sense of emotional maturity, which it would be the next step for you, Aquarius, would be gaining emotional clarity as well. You need that first. Once you are, once you understand how it is you're feeling or what it is you're going through or whatnot, whatever, then you can work on building the emotional maturity to step up and do what's right. King of Cups is coupled with the Hermit. Self-awareness, Aquarius. 
I mean, I understand somebody has hurt you or I understand, you know, or you've hurt somebody or um, there was deception, there was lies, trickery, cheating, this, that, and the third, blah, 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 whoop, do not that bullshit. But ultimately, Aquarius, I don't care what the other person did, how the other person treated you. Ultimately, this is on you to find the self-awareness within so that you can come to a sense of emotional maturity and do what's right for yourself in this situation and this situation as a whole, really, because if somebody deserves to lose you in, in terms of how they've been treating you, then that's their karma, all right? But also there's a need for self-awareness so that you can have this emotional maturity to not do this kind of, or not get into this type of situation again. To heal from this, end this chapter for good and move on to something better. But it's all about you. It's not about the other person. It's about you and what you learn from this and the sense of self-awareness that you can get from this. Okay? Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius. In the second half of your reading, you've got the Six of Cups, the past, soulmate energy. I do feel like this was a, if this, especially if this was a romantic relationship, I do feel like this sold, this, this started out on a high note. I don't know what happened in the meantime, but ultimately it is what it is now. You know what I mean? Don't allow yourself to be trapped or caught up in the past. Okay. The Six of Cups is coupled with the Knight of Swords. So I definitely feel like there's an attachment here that someone has just because of your history, your past together, or because of the fact that, you know, because of how it started. But just because it started one way doesn't mean that it's all, obviously doesn't mean it's always going to be that way, because obviously it's changed since then. So this Knight of Swords is saying we need to cut the past. Just cut it. Instead of moving into this Queen of Swords energy and being resentful and spiteful and vindictive and all that and mean and nasty because of the pain that you've been through, use this Knight of Swords energy to cut it out. Okay? Your challenge here, Aquarius, in the second half of your reading is, the, is denial, the Two of Swords. I just heard not being able to see clearly because they're the object of my affection. But they're stabbing you in the back. So... Two of Swords is coupled with... The Six of Swords. Move on. Moving on from this. Your challenge right here, right now, Aquarius, is to deal with the fact that you are in denial that something needs to change. You've got to move forward. Like, cut your losses here, Aquarius. Literally, I want to say, what's worse? Staying in this situation to honor a commitment or a contract that you sign, which is only going to be more destructive or biting the bullet and dealing with the, the, the consequences of freeing yourself from it. Closing message or potential outcome for you, Aquarius. The Eight of Cups. Walking away. Eight of Cups is coupled with. Yeah, the Emperor. Why? Because you're the leader. You're in control of your own life. You have the right to make the executive decision as to what you will give your energy to and what you will no longer accept or entertain in your life. Let's get your closing oracle guidance, Aquarius. Five shots. One. Two. Three. For my Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of March 2021. This is four. And this is five. All right, Aquarius. Let's see. Closing Oracle Guidance for you. 
Ooh, okay. I like this. I like this a lot, actually. It's the Green Man. Initiative, Fertilization, and Action. Card number 34, which is down, boils down to a seven. And the seven is uh, wisdom, a learning, spiritual awareness, higher awareness. Um, it's And it's usually uh, wisdom that is heart one. Okay, the lesson of a number seven is not easy. Seven is an odd number, just like five. And odd numbers tend to represent change. You thought five was difficult. Ooh, honey. Because now when you're accessing the level of seven, the level of seven... It's about higher awareness, which things get a lot more difficult, okay? Not so long ago, all was quiet, dark, and cold. But something has changed, and it will manifest into your world in significant ways, through you and all around you. This is a time of renewal, a time of new beginnings and connections for you. Your energy will be extending itself easefully, and you will fall in love with the new world you are creating. This is a time for you to actively pursue what it is you wish to create in your life and to acknowledge the presence of a, the powerful new energies all about you. Each day will bring these changes and it is as if life force itself is surging through you and every cell radiates this bright, strong, fierce new energy. To be effective, this energy must be directed, not tamed, but given places to flow into. And thus you must choose to shape your energies, to shape the energies you are experiencing. Nature and its energies shall pour through you when this card comes forth. And it is necessary for you to quickly begin to shape these forces in meaningful ways. This is also a time when you no longer see sharp distinctions between what is outside of yourself and what is within. You feel linked, connected, a part of a great natural magical whole, and this empowers you into brave, open-hearted action. Go forward and thrive, dear one. So there you have it, Aquarius. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. Um, uh, I am available for personal readings if you would like, um, and also check me out on, on Patreon, yeah? But with that said, I hope you have a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of April. Yeah? Take care. Bye. <laughs>